Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I would like to discuss uh, not just the increasing traffic chaos caused by the self-inflicted Brexit lorry tailbacks but also how the media are either corruptly or incompetently failing to ask the right questions and present the answers to the public. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Kent's getting a bit tricky to navigate on the routes near the main roads into Dover and Folkestone, I see. So I had my attention drawn to the delays for sea crossing times for lorries trying to get to France from Britain at Ashford noted here that the median time spent by trucks was 11 hours. 11 hours. It was accompanied by someone else getting what I assume to be their daughter recording the blocked roads as they spent half an hour traveling a mile to get home. I'll link that in the description below. So the tailbacks are affecting people just trying to travel around between home, work, wherever in parts of Kent. And the thing is, I talked last week about how this was not really being covered in the media. And the problem is that when they do cover it, you're still none the wiser. You know, for the most part, when the media do broach the subjects, they try and dismiss the delays as, ah, oh, it's nothing of consequence, it's all perfectly normal, making a fuss about nothing. The latest flurry of reports in, in, in media trying to cover it up involved an interview with someone from the Port of Dover saying that TAP, which is the Travel Access Protocol, has been used for years when demand gets a bit much at the ports. That's what it's there for. Stop making a fuss. The system involves speed restrictions, keeping lorries in the left-hand lane on the A20 approach to Dover in order to free up road for other motorists. That, in theory, means that non-hauliers, people just bobbing about their business in the local area, aren't going to get stuck in gridlock. Fine, great. But this system has been in operation for at least 12 days in the last few weeks. The Port of Dover spokesperson is reported as saying that the system is designed for when the port can't cope with demand and has been used in, uh, for years. Yes, it's been in place since the end of 2015, I gather. But here is where a real journalist would ask questions. They wouldn't just go, OK, fine, we'll write that down. They would ask how many times TAP has been used in January since it was implemented in 2015. So how many times in January 2016, January 2017, and so on. So we can get a bit of a comparison going. Because the thing is, January is a time of very low demand for freight transport, relatively speaking. And, and especially when you consider the much lower demand for cars trying to get across as well. It's why there are ferries out for refitting at the moment, which is technically reducing capacity even more but they are refitted at the start of the year so that they are ready for spring when demand traditionally increases a lot and will do so again this year. Bear in mind, you would expect more cars as well as lorries wanting to cross the channel as we move out of winter. So demand in January is low. Now, I don't know how to get how many times Dover TAP has been implemented each month since January 2016, or even each year. That would be interesting to see. Maybe someone knows. I'm, I've had a little look, couldn't find it. I'm going to guess, not at all in the month of January before Brexit, but what I am told is that we have already had TAP implemented more days this January, just in the last few weeks, than in the whole of 2021. The whole of last year. More in a few weeks at the Remember, low demand part of the year that in the entirety of the whole of last year. Because then a real journalist would ask why TAP, as long standing as the system may be, has been used more times this month than the whole of an entire year. And it's not like 2021 was a smoothie. It's not like this was like 2020 when the pandemic shut everything down. This was the year when, when economies were supposed to be emerging. You know, and also last year we had Brexit. We did have queues to deal with due to customs and standards controls that the EU had in place at Dover from the start of last year. We needed the lorry parks to help manage that then. And the answer, of course, to this question will be because the combination of our own botched customs controls with the ones that already existed is clogging everything up. 
And for those who don't understand how delays at the import side of the border can impact the export side, the ever useful Michael has you covered. I shall link his Twitter thread also in the description below. It should not be possible for any competent journalist to allow anyone to finish their report with the notion that TAP is just a system established years before Brexit that has to be used now and then because of the realities of being near a major port, whether you're in the EU or outside it. Having an emergency system is not the same as having to deploy it on a regular basis because then it's not an emergency system, it's, it's, it's a normal system. You know, they should have asked how many days TAP was used in the Januaries of each year since 2016, as well as the overall annual figures. They then should have compared them with 2022. So far, the comparison would not look good. So then they should have asked them why January this year has required so much more intervention with this system than previous entire years, much less January's alone. That would be journalism. Failing to do so is shilling. You know, deploying a system 12 days out of 18, as the report seems happy to publish, is actually describing using an emergency system for two thirds of the time. That's not supposed to be the case. And nor is it the case that it's all down to those ferries being refitted either, because that's another thing they try and plug. Remember, the reason those ferries are serviced at this time of year is not because something suddenly happened to a load of them. It's normal, it's planned. It is because in the past, this has been the time of year when they could do without them. You know, they need them for April onwards. They've got to be ready for April onwards. So if we can't cope with the reduced number of available ferries in January, and lorries waiting 11 hours is objectively not coping, then what makes people think we'll be all right in the spring just because we're gonna have some more lorries, some more ferries, sorry. We can't cope with the January capacity that has always previously been fine for January, of course, we're not going to cope with the capacity that has always previously been what was needed for April. And it's not like we can just increase that capacity. Like I've discussed it before, we can't expand our ports. Given that, we will just have to reduce our level of trade because that's all we can give. Can you expand your capacity? No. So we'll have to reduce the level of trade. Like Maybe the Conservatives know this. Maybe they don't. It's not a fruitful use of my time on this occasion, on this issue, to try and work out whether they are mad or just pretending to be mad. Because either way, our trade is going to be reduced, whether in line with government plans or not. There are a number of reasons why we cannot get back up to pre-Brexit levels of trade. The first is that at what used to be considered busy periods, which is not now, it will be impossible to process the lorries trying to get through in anything like a reasonable time. We're here in January, there's been at least one point where lorries were waiting an average of 11 hours to cross. These are not lorries where something is wrong with the paperwork either. This is just the time needed to cross. The second thing is that lorry drivers do not enjoy these long and uncertain delays, and nor, I imagine, do their bosses. And I'm quite sure their customers don't. Those lorry drivers who have the option of turning down runs to Britain will do so. And it hardly matters quite how many that equates to, it will be a net loss. You know, what prospect is there of compensating by getting more drivers to come in from elsewhere? I mean, I guess the visas for India could be part of the planning. I hope they're up with the latest changes to the highway code, because I'm not convinced they are consistent with the experience of Indian lorry drivers from what I've seen of footage in Delhi. And third, alternative methods of transport are not feasible. Air freight has increased, uh, but it's only, it's incredibly expensive. It's not a sustainable long-term plan. We also don't have the capacity there either, which is why the cost, which was already steep for some things that lorries could easily deliver, which is why lorries were used, has gone up even more. I've not even heard of a government plan to try and expand our air freight capacity either. So I think it's safe to assume that even they realize it's a non-starter. And none of the Brexit crowd have a plan. I saw some tour suggesting that we should stop using lorries and use boats instead. I mean, how do they think the lorries get from Dover to Calais? And do, do, does he think that a boat can just rock up at a warehouse 100 miles inland, trundle along to the coast, and then just drop into the sea and be on its way to France or the Netherlands? Maybe it doesn't even need a port, this drug-induced fantasy about how boats work. Just hits the coastline on continental Europe, skids up the beach, and looks for the nearest main road to get it to its destination. 
but the ones not on drugs don't seem to have any ideas at all. And that's because, as actual experts have been at pains to point out, there are no options. There is a way to deal with it, but there's, no, there's not a range of ways to deal with it. If you do not want the constraints of customs delays, you need a customs union. If you do not want the constraints of the still to be implemented standards delays, you haven't had those yet, you need regulatory alignment. That's it, that's what you do. But this is currently politically toxic for the Conservatives, so it's not gonna happen while they sit on the government benches. But this is not being communicated to the wider public, and so the government get away with this pointless self-destruction. But those are my thoughts, let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, and if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.